the Sanderson <laughs> Pens podcast episode 243 for Wednesday, September 27th, 2017. This is Brian. This is Lisa. Thanks for joining us. Do you think fringe on the dress or fringe on the boots? <laughs> <laughs> the music is now reminding me of like go-go dancers. So I'm just trying to decide, you know, like, that'd be cool. Like a short little haircut, dress with fringe on right, it. Let's work on that for next okay. week. Okay. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> New company uniform. Yeah. <sighs> so here we are. It is Wednesday. Um, Eric got back in late last night, so... It's been fun today so far. Um, last week we mentioned that we were on a diet and it's um, going fine. A uh, couple people emailed in um, a couple years ago when I was diagnosed with hypothyroid. Uh, some really great friends uh, sent some cool recipes for gluten-free food. Um, my doctor recommended trying going gluten-free and it was really not easy with a house full of other people who wanted to eat gluten. Um, so now we are doing... A food-free diet. <laughs> a keto. We're not eating food. Not <laughs> <laughs> nothing, we can eat nothing. Nothing. Um, so we're doing keto. So, uh, you know, lots of meat, eggs, and cheese, and that's yeah, all good. That's pretty much it. It's getting a little boring. So if any of you out there have done keto and have any suggestions, recommendations, etc., cetera, uh, please feel free to email um, and make some recommendations. I really miss the crunch. That's, I miss the bread, I miss rice. I can do without all of that, but pasta. You miss pasta. I miss pasta. I miss the rice with butter and salt. Mm. So anyway, uh, if anyone has gone through keto and survived, <laughs> please let me know what your favorite recipes are. It's working. Yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah. It works. Um, it's just, we're at that board with the recipe part. Well, let's see. You started before I did. I but did. I started like the day we got back from DC DC show. So, so it's been a little over a month, um, and and so far so good. Uh, the other two people who live with us are not quite as enthusiastic, um, devoted, <laughs> diehard, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're working on them. But uh, anyway, and Brian has a new hobby. Yeah, well, I've collected every pen there is. So oh no. Oh, I have that on, on tape. It's on tape. You're done. No, this this this, this, this <laughs> happened. This happened purely, sort of on accident. When in doubt, blame Eric. I, I'll blame Eric for it. Um, although I had looked into it prior to Eric. What? Um, I had. I didn't know about that. Well, it happened. So, um, <laughs> one day Eric got a package in the mail and he brought it home and uh, lo and behold, it's a, a double-edged safety razor. And I thought, well, that's cool. And then we started talking about it and. It's ridiculous. All and, and, gone downhill from there. And the gentleman out there will, will will side with me on this one. It's crazy when you got to spend twenty five dollars to buy three blades. Yes. For your razor. Yes, I'm with you on that. And an electric doesn't shave very close, and I just a safety razor. You can buy a hundred blades for, for $10. less than ten ten dollars or less. Um, now it's all the other rest of the stuff that's going to cost you a fortune, oh my but. God. It's a really slippery slope. Um, you so, know, and, and these people are uh, no different than us fountain pen collectors. Uh, in fact, there's a whole forum, Badger and Blade, and I think there's a couple of other ones out there um, devoted to, to to wet shaving. And um, you know, it's cool. You can you know, people do collect them, and I, I managed to find a 1958 <laughs> you. yes, a 1958 <laughs> Gillette uh, Fat Boy razor at the uh, local antique store for the princely sum of ten dollars. Um, so, you know, it, the part, some of it's not expensive. I mean, you can get, you know, just like fountain pens, you can get ridiculous prices on, you know, you can spend hundreds of dollars on brushes and all that stuff, but uh, um, definitely. So we started with one brush, one razor, a stand, a soap holder, and one um, soap round. What do you call them? Just yeah, like a little. It's, it's a little a disc little of soap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now we're up to two brushes, one of which te I, technically I made three. in three brushes. Well, I had, I had an old one, my oh, father's old brush. But you haven't used that. It needs to be well, yeah. re-knotted? Re-knotted, yes. Me, got the, I know got the, the lingo. lingo down, yeah. uh, well, three, br <laughs> three brushes. Uh, I don't count the, um, your father's because you don't use it. So two brushes, one of which I admit I bought for him. Um, 
And then you found some company that sells, dig this, soap samples, soap just samples. like ink samples. It How was cool crazy. I, I go onto the website and I'm like, oh, that looks good and that looks good. And they're two, like 250 each. It was just like just like buying a sample. Sample. It was great. Oh my they're God. little thin things. They came in a box. Yeah, they were nicely it was packaged. Sweet. Yeah, it was really pretty um, sweet. You've got the stand that holds the razor and. <laughs> four razors. <laughs> and now you're up to four razors? I have four razors, yeah. <laughs> Don't try this. They're all different. Folks. You know, I got I got people sending me blades and that you was know, cool. That uh, was cool because you know, one of the them blade. is not a one's a single edge and okay. a couple of them are double edge and um, what's so what's the difference between I get the single edge and the double edge. What's the difference between the butterfly and the non butterfly? The butterfly opens from the bottom and it goes. Okay, like and that. what's the other one? The other one just comes apart. Okay, I don't know what you call it, but. Non-butterfly. Non-butterfly, but you can use it Moth? to travel. <laughs> anyway, anyway, these people are just like fountain pen people. They're, you know, it's like collecting anything else. So you have a new tribe. I got a new tribe, yeah. Okay. There's tons of them, but most guys shave, so it's... So we, um, Brian's been doing this for, I guess, about a month. Yeah, a little while. And month, yeah. we haven't taken any of this to travel with. <laughs> And then he starts complaining about shaving in the hotel room. It's brutal. It's not the same. It's not the same. So apparently you can take one of the razors apart and put it in an Altoids tin. All fits in a nice little container. Well, because otherwise if it's all together, it's going to be huge and bulky in our travel um, toiletries bag. So we had to go buy Altoids. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't eat the Altoids, so I just tossed the Altoids <laughs> and bought the tin. I don't know. Oh it's it's just like fun pen people. It you is. got a bag, you got you know, you gotta have your pens, you gotta have ink, you got all this extra stuff mm -hmm. that if you had a bick. So the other you know. this past weekend we went down to the outlet mall and we went to Bed Bath uh, Bath and Body Works and got a tube of shaving cream, soap, yeah. shaving shaving cream, cream yeah. something, so that it's we ridiculous. can take that to travel with. There's but like apparently so many different it's options. not as good as the soap. No, no, no. Oh my god. I'm gonna stick with my Mach three. <laughs> It's expensive, but... It's stupidly expensive. It is, but now I have all of your blades, too. You so. won't use them. Oh, those, yes. Yeah, all the, all the other blades that we would share. So anyway, anyway. that's Brian's new obsession, yeah, anyway. shaving. Should we talk about pens or something? We could. <laughs> Speaking of me buying things for you. Last week? Oh, oh you're buying something for me? No. What I, are you buying? I picked an ink oh, for well, you. Oh, well, to buy. It was a... Ink challenge. Fall ink challenge. Yes. And so we picked pens that we didn't normally use. Which is weird because I use my, yeah, I use Pro Beer was, Slims, yes, but, but I Yes, but that was in the case. That was not yes, in your, that was I, in, in the I case I haven't used my Sky in a while, so I used my Sky. The Sky Slim. Slim. Brian filled it up with. Oh, are we going to talk about that? We're going to talk about the pens first. Oh. Well. So you got that, which is appropriate because those are really, they're done. They're discontinued. I know it's sad. We we These bought the great. we bought the last that they had. Didn't we? We bought a lot. We, well, yeah. Okay. But they're coming. They're yeah. coming. Um, there will be no more once they're out. And and I had my uh, my Schaefer Legacy in sterling silver. There's a Legacy Heritage in the slim, the large, and the king of pens. Yeah, they're all done. All gone. Yeah, yeah. In no fact, more the sky. only thing the sky that, has fallen. The only the sky, has fallen. The only <laughs> sky that's left actually is a slim. The full size and the king of pen are all sold out. Okay. Um, but uh, I use my Legacy Heritage, which uh, are still available, by the way. Um, that's, that's a really pretty pen. It's a nice pen, yeah. It's, it's the flagship model for Schaefer. Um, you can still get it. It's got that, that inlay nib. I love that. Um, I wish it was thinner. Well, then it but would, I guess that works it for you. It wouldn't be a Legacy <laughs> if, it was, if it was thinner. Um, but I hadn't used it in a while, so I, I picked that one. Okay. And then the idea was fall-themed inks. Yes. And when in doubt, blame Kim because she was the one who had filled her pens with fall inks and then had to borrow a couple of hours for hot stuff or something because she didn't want to take the fall ink out. And we thought we should try some fall inks. So what so, did you think of your ink before I, I tell you what it is? I liked it. It was uh, a little more brown than I would have chosen. What's a fall ink? I know, but I'm just saying. It's a little more brown? It looks almost exactly like the ink you picked for me. Mine I, is mine is more of like a burnt orange okay. color. It almost mine's similar. You know, more more brown than orange. Okay. Maybe. So are we gonna switch? Are you just gonna tell me what's in mine? Uh, we should switch. This? That would be fun. Because okay, I don't right? I don't know what it is. And 
I'll grab here this really awkward thing that we're doing. <laughs> it's not planned in advance. Oh, nice. Okay. Really? Yes. Okay. So, what did you, what did I put in your pen? In my Pro Gear Slim Sky was Monteverdi Fire Opal. That does not look like I thought it would look. I actually, when I opened the books, so I went to our books and I looked in the the orange. I started in those color ranges. Now, the first thing I saw, I said, "That's cool." That yeah, one, I, think, I would never have picked that. It, you know, in the in the sample vial, it looks. Burgundy until it really kind of almost thins a, a out. Hint of red, almost. Yeah. yeah. No, that does not look <laughs> like I thought it would. So that's cool. All right. Uh, and you picked for me uh, Kobe number eight, the Arima Amber. Uh, I think this is one of the ones I was looking at uh, when we had uh, Pen Club last. Look at me. I'm uh, watching you're, you. you're paying attention. <laughs> um, if you're really paying attention, you need to put number 44 in there and said, well, that's, that's not a fall color. That's a fall color because no, of some no. reason. So. But uh, no, that was nice. Uh, um, you know, I don't normally use colors other than blue or black or burgundy. sometimes green or burgundy or brown. But uh, I, it was nice. It was a uh, decent color. And uh, like I say, it was, it was kind of a burnt orange almost. And uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting. It, it, you know, a little bit of outside my comfort zone. and. Uh, that's good for you. It was the only pen I used all week. Okay. Up until yesterday. Okay. I was sick yesterday, so, uh, Monday, so um, I didn't use it up yet, but uh, I will. No, I liked it. I would, yeah. I'm would. i surprised because it. it's not how I remember it when I was doing the swabs. <laughs> so that's a good thing. It's, it's a pretty color. It was either that or there was, there was a dye mine I was going to throw in there, but I thought... This one would be interesting. It's a neat, neat looking color. Yep. It's and a little, it's, little bit, uh, almost a little bit brighter than, than the, the Kobe, I think. And it's fairly new. Some of the diamine colors have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. Yep. I didn't so. want you to guess it right away. That's true. So. All right. Cool. Awesome. Speaking of ink. Ink. Well, this is all you. All right. Uh, we were notified last week, week before, uh, that there has been a dye change in two of the Noodler's inks. Um, the Base State Concord Grape. Uh, and the base state, base state, I can't talk now, base state Cape Cod Cranberry. Both um, the formulas are still the same, the properties are still the same, but there has been a change in the dye. Um, so we do have the new grape in stock. Uh, we do not have uh, the cranberry yet. Um, once we're out, we'll order it. But so anything shipped after September 11th, is the new color. Um, when we did our swab um, of the grape, it seemed that there was just a tiny bit of a color difference. So we've got them swabbed and they'll be up on the site in the next day or so. Um, and I'm assuming that the cranberry is also the just a hair. Cranberry was just very minimally different, I yeah. thought. The, the, the grape Both was a little bit different, but uh, just not, a not bit. terribly, not terribly different, so, um, but. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's news from uh, from Noodlers. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got an envelope there. I do. Is it my turn to answer the question this week? I it, think it is. When is it your turn to answer the question? Never. Question <laughs> of the week. I read it, you answer it. It works for me. Dun, dun, dun. Does Brian ever have enough pens? All right. No. Thank you. Oh, we get this all the time. Uh, does a higher gold content mean that a nib is more flexible? Um, meaning a 21 karat nib, is it more flexible than a 14 karat nib? Take it away, nib man. Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, actually, when gold content goes up, typically nibs are more firm. Uh, it all has to do with the alloy composition. So what the gold is alloyed with um, these days, most manufacturers, uh, Sailor does 21 karat. The higher gold content is done more for uh, luxury purposes. Um, uh, France, of course, requires 18 karat for anything to be considered solid gold. Uh, but the rest of the world uh, pretty much uses 14 karat as their, um, as their number. Usually, as you go up, you're not getting any more flexibility. Sailor 21 karat nibs are fairly firm. Uh, in fact, Sailor during uh, during even the, the 70s was doing uh, 23 karat uh, platinum. I think did a 22 karat nib. If they got more flexible as the content went up, um, 
you wouldn't see very many of those nibs today because they just they're too soft. So they they mix it with uh, some other materials and they're fairly firm. Um, we get that question a lot. Oh, well, it's 21 carats, so it's going to be you know that's that's the nib you want. Well, it's a great nib, but um, you're typically going to find more of your flexible nibs are going to be 14 carat, and that's just kind of how it is. Which is different because in jewelry, the higher the, the gold con, the softer jewelry. the gold. Yes, yeah, well, the material is softer, but right. um, for the pen to flex, it doesn't, you know, that's really not a, um, doesn't matter what the gold content is. I mean, I guess you could make a 21 karat flexible nib, but it wouldn't be. Only once. Uh, yeah, you can do it once, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but yeah, 14 karat is usually where you find your flexible nibs. You think about it, your Falcons, um, you know, your 88s, uh, 88 flexes are, are in there too, so. And what about um, the vintage pens? Vintage pens, almost all, almost all of them are 14 karat, uh, except of course for those made in France and they have to be 18 karat, so. Um, but yeah, you don't, 21 karat means pretty much you can assume it's gonna be anything above is gonna be fairly, fairly firm, so. Good to know. Short I'm and sweet. I'm sticking with my 14 that doesn't flex. <laughs> That's good for you. I don't do flex. Okay, don't do flex. <laughs> um, we got a couple new pens and a couple of things that uh, came out in the past week or so. Yeah. We should uh, we should mention. Um, you'd probably be able to speak better to this, but Montblanc came out with a new release recently, the Marilyn Monroe Ballpoint. Yes, and, and fountain pen and roller ball also in the whole series. You know, it's it's interesting. I like the red color. Uh, red's really hard to do well. It's either too pink, too orange, too blue, too yellow, too something. Um, this was really done well. Uh, supposedly the red was taken from uh, Marilyn Monroe's favorite lipstick, uh, which was called Ruby Tuesday. Is that where Ruby Tuesday gets their name? I don't know. I need to look that up now. They got it from Marilyn Monroe? I can't imagine. Doesn't make sense, <laughs> but I don't know. Anyway. Uh, there is, uh, how do you pronounce that, an Akoya pearl on the clip. Okay. Uh, apparently her only piece of jewelry that was given to her by her husband Joe DiMaggio was um, a pearl? Pearl necklace. Yeah. Pearl necklace, yeah. okay. Um, Jolt and Joe. What? Jolt and Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, her signature is on the nose cone in diamonds because, of course, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Was sung by uh, Marilyn in the movie Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. I have not seen that movie. We should watch it. Is it on Netflix? Um, well, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um, really done well. We've got the ballpoint in stock, I believe. Yep. But uh, if you're looking for one of the other pieces, just let us know. We're happy to order it while they still have it. Yep. Uh, so that's the new, the new Mont Blanc. Uh, a couple of sailor items, yes. um, Shalanas, uh, which are pretty much officially discontinued. We bought everything that was left at Atoya, uh, which was which wasn't very much. Um, actually, it was only three of the eight different models, um, all in gold. And um, it's a shame they're. You some... used to collect them, didn't you? No, I had. You used to collect the cartridges. I had two or three. It's not really a collection. Three is a collection. All right, I had a collection. Um, but uh, so if, if that's in there, they're extra fine. They're eighteen. Those are eighteen carat nibs, uh, which is unusual in with Sailor because uh, they're usually either fourteen or twenty one. But uh, the Shalanas are eighteen carat nibs. They only come in extra fine. Mm -hmm. um, they come with a converter, which is the, maybe the world's most <laughs> awesome converter. It's so uh, tiny. A push pull is really well made. Um, and uh, a couple cartridges. It comes with a, a nice little leather pouch. Um, yeah, it's well done. It's well done. If but, you like uh, skinny pens, this is the pen for you. Yeah, we got. Uh, they come in. They come in like eight configurations, pretty much. But now we're down to three. Um, they're all gold, uh, and that's gold, gold plated, um, stripe pattern, barley pattern, uh, black, or the, the maroon is actually is probably the more popular because. That's cool. It has a maroon stripe on the clip, and then the section is maroon, so it's uh, kind of pretty. a neat, neat looking pen. Uh, so those are those are done, and when those are gone, they're That's gone. That's it. So, and then we also got in the uh, Sailor 1911 Machiers. 1911 Large, yep, yep, yep. And yeah. the Deer and the Dragonfly. 
took us months to finally get them in, and now they're has discontinued. It been six, nine months, nine months maybe. Yeah, worth the, the, the wait, deer. The deer for sure is done because when they shipped it, they had next to it discontinued. discontinued. So, um, dragonfly and which is so cool. Yeah, that's and really so cool. that's that's the last one. The dragonfly is nice, and so these have nice. It's nice maquille, um, little rodden points on the wings of the dragonfly, you know, and the deer and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but nice, uh, large size, 21 karat gold nib. Um, I'm disappointed they've been, like it took so long to get them and now they're gone. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that this means that there will be something to replace it. Um, there Do was the 1911 standard series right. that came out, but that's, I think that is pretty much, gone. This is gone, pretty yeah. much. Um, so did we set any of these aside for you? You've we can if you want. Um, just I'm, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> I like the dragonfly. <laughs> it looks nice. There was a butterfly too, but that one's officially gone. Yeah. Um, well, we have a couple gift-giving events yeah. coming up. What, this week? No, not Next this week? week. No. Denver Pen Show no. or something? No. November. Button. Push. <laughs> November. <laughs> Yeah, is our yeah, dating yeah, anniversary, yeah, yeah. and then Christmas, and then New Year's. Well, we'll see. We'll take we'll take three. it to we'll get get three. three. Okay, I can pick one. Three. Uh, anyway, they're nice. Um, three. Really, really well done. Um, I the, I like the the gold work is is very nice. Um, you know, in the shading, and they're just they're they're, they're beautiful. They're, they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so those those are here. Um, actually, I was. They just showed up. I was shocked. I forgot we ordered them. So. I love it when that happens. I know. This I cool know. stuff just appears. Oh. Like magic. Speaking of other things that are just appearing from um, Japan. The uh, second batch of the Hobonichi Weeks uh, planners are coming in. They should be here Any in day. the next day or Any two. Day, yep. uh, hopefully before the end of the week. Um, we would ordered some. We did pre-orders. They sold out in just days. Um, they came in. We shipped them out. And now our second batch is on the way. And uh, we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, then I, I like the I like the green. I think it's a nice nice color. I like the size. I like the ultramarine. Ooh. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not good about I'm not good about paper products. I, I I like them. Like I have that I have that Mont Blanc 149 notebook on my desk. I just don't know what to write in it. And so maybe Dear this is Lisa, more. <laughs> yeah. I love you so yeah. much. <laughs> Dear Lisa, it's not big Thank enough. you for my um, 17th <laughs> shaving brush. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I just, I, I, I know I used to give you, you know, flack for, you didn't know what to write into them, write in them, but I, I have these, I'll, I'll write in them, I just don't have anything to write. Shoe? Other foot? No, 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 no. I just, you know, I, I write things down for lists, that's what I write. Okay. So I don't do, the bullet journaling for me seems like too much work. I don't want to have to think about it. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't need another job, so. But yeah, I like it, I like the green, it's a nice color, it's a nice size. Um, hmm. Hmm. We should look at those. We should. So anyway, uh, those are coming any day. You can actually pre-order them now and uh, reserve yours, and we'll ship it out right when it comes in. Yep. So um, we got a couple other things coming up uh, the next week or two. I think that's yes, going to be exciting. Yes, pretty um, exciting things. So you know, I'll throw that out there. Uh, Lisa's going to use her fire opal for the rest of the week. I am. And, How about you? Uh, I've got you know this is not bad. I'm, I, put, I maybe put it in a pen with. Um, but the fatter, the fatter nib. nib, yeah, yeah. This okay. this uh, this one's got maybe a legacy like a fine medium nib, so it would come out nicer in a, a music nib or something like that. Big bold. Something, yeah. I okay. bet you. I bet it, it looks like it it, it it shades a little bit too. Um, with well, that'll uh, be fun. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, cool. Uh, but I, other than that, do we got anything else we want to chat uh, about? No, we'll try and put a couple pictures up on maybe Instagram. We'll see if the creative team will allow that of um, the damage that we did to Eric's desk while he was uh, away on, for two weeks. Lisa's it's on my account. Instagram. Um, yeah. We periodically would take pictures of all the stuff, just stuff that we would put on Eric's desk. When you're gone for two weeks, watch out. Uh, it is full. And I wish that I had seen the look on his face when he walked in and saw all this crap all over his desk. Um, so. Anyway. Other than that, uh, okay. I think everything's kind of normal, which is which is really nice at home right now. So good. Next week. Oh my God, Denver. Uh, Denver Pen Show. Um, Can't believe it's here. As as always, if you're thinking about going, just go. go. Um, don't second guess it. Uh, great show. This year's going to be exciting. It's all in one ballroom. 
Um, and Capizzi puts on a terrific show. Uh, it's very well run. Yes. Uh, lots of things going on. We've got um, uh, classes nib repair and guys and seminars. classes and all sorts of stuff. Um, and of course, morning coffee and donuts. So Yes. Uh, which we're just going to have the coffee. Um, but uh, anyway. <sighs> Oh, anyway, no uh, that's next week. <laughs> um, so ho hopefully we'll see. We'll talk more about it next week. We'll yes. see what the, the seminar lineup is and uh, maybe update on who who's all going to be there so you all can uh, plan accordingly your shopping lists. There you go. So, All right, I think that's about it for this week. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, and tune in next week for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. And pen shows. And pen shows. And follow the blog for news, ink reviews, all sorts of other cool videos, and follow us on social media as Anderson Pens. Have a great day. Bye.